Thank you for listening to the Gateway to the Rockies podcast from Visit Aurora from the Raptors of the Stanley Marketplace. This is the show dedicated to telling the stories of Aurora, Colorado. Hi there, I'm Dave, the Senior Marketing Manager for Visit Aurora. Did you know Colorado is home to one of the world's most famous drum corps? The Blue Knights Drum and Bugle Corps is a part of Ascend Performing Arts based right here in Aurora. And Ascend aims to further the education and growth of young people through participation in high caliber performing art programs that promote teamwork and discipline develop leadership skills, and enhance self-esteem. Today, I'm honored to be joined by the leader of Ascend Performing Arts, CEO Mark Arnold. How are you, sir? I'm, I'm great. Great to be here, Dave. Mark, starting off, what, what are some of your childhood memories that, that sparked your love of music and, and ultimately getting involved in the performing arts? Music has been a part of my DNA, literally. My, my father was a, uh, a musician and a band director, and I have pictures of him performing with Nat King Cole wow. playing in the big bands back when. And so truly has been a part of my DNA, and I think that obviously that was my introduction. And then as I was growing up in Wyoming, a small town in Wyoming, the Casper Troopers were at Drum and Bugle Corps based out of Casper, and I got familiar with them, and I've been hooked in that activity ever since. Did it just come naturally to you? Did you have a musicality? Did you have an affinity for it immediately? Or was it just, you know, you witnessed and observed and, and it sprung from there? Well, music is what really gave me my niche in, in high school and my identity. And, and it, were, it was the place where I could identify with, with other kids who loved music and what I did. And so that's where I found my home was in music and in the music department at the high school. When you're a young person, finding that community, finding that aspect of belonging is so important. You don't realize that that's the additional benefits of joining something like that. You're just looking for people that vibe with what you vibe with, right? Uh, precisely, and, and it gives you a reason you know, to get up and, and to be with a group of people that um, love what you're doing and people you love, and, and it's, it, makes you, it makes you whole as a person to be belong to something like that. You were a leader early, essentially going from college to the University of Wyoming straight into teaching music. L looking back, did you always know that leading and molding young people was, I guess, your purpose? I don't know that I did. I yeah. knew I enjoyed music and, you know, it was my, I grew up in Riverton, Wyoming, of all places, and one of my, actually it was the choir instructor, said, you need to get out of this town. And here we're going to get to a scholarship to the University of Wyoming. And yeah, it sounded okay to me at the time. So, you know, that's where I connected. And, you know, I think where I really connected was I loved organizing people and I loved the administration part of it. And I was good at it. And that's where my career headed. Laramie's not exactly metropolis, but I imagine it's bigger than Riverton. Was was there a bit of a culture shock going into college? Oh, Laramie was definitely the big city. Yeah. And then I got invited or asked to help instruct the Troopers Drum and Bugle Corps. And when I hooked up with them, suddenly, next thing I know, I'm in New York City, San Francisco. I'm all over the United States with this group. You know, and, and so it opened up my whole world. When you get exposed to these other drum corps throughout the country, where do you put yourself competitively? Are, are you saying we have a, a, we're right there with these big cities or these bigger groups, or is it okay, here's a bar to aspire to. What was that experience like? I think the Drum and Bugle Corps activity, which is obviously what the Blue Knights are a part of, yeah. um, is something that is viewed for those kids who are trying to achieve high levels of excellence in a competitive environment as the very top of the very top of the heap. It's um, we compete in a in a in an activity under the banner of Drum Corps International, which would be compared to the NFL and football. You know, it's the organizing body of competitive drum corps, and they bring us all together all around across the United States. And, and so it's the highest level. And I think kids that participate in music in, in high schools and in the scholastic world look up to the Blue Knights, just like kids who are in football look up to the Broncos. Yeah. And it's like validates what they're doing in high school. You were fresh out of school, teaching people slightly out of your peer group when you first started off. Was it difficult to establish authority, or did you have an advantage of perspective being a young person yourself when you were first starting out? It really wasn't hard to establish authority because 
you know, m- music and excelling in music creates a discipline and a focus that, you know, you share, it's a bond that you share with everybody. And, and you know, to be good, to be a part of something that's the best, you know, discipline and, and, and leadership just comes naturally. Speaking of the best, the Blue Knights are truly a local institution. This is the 66th year, if I'm if I'm correct. You you have a robust history of the Blue Knights published on your website. For those who aren't familiar, can can you give us the Reader's Digest version of who the Blue Knights are and and how you initially got involved? Yeah, the Blue Knights have been a part of the Denver Metro community since 1958. Mm-hmm. They were originally formed by couple of local television personalities, Fred and Faye Taylor, who had a talent school and they were vaudeville actors and kind of had the morning show that kids would wake up to back then. And Fred Taylor had a percussion studio and taught a lot of drummers and he wanted an outlet for those drummers. And so he started the Blue Knights Drum and Bugle Corps back in 1958. It was a, a community-based, you know, local performing organization. And in the early 80s, the, the organization made the decision, hey, we want to tour nationally and we want to become, you know, one of the top drum corps in the world. And that's where they reached out to me at the time I was out teaching in Omaha, Nebraska. And, and uh, they reached out to me because they were aware of what I had done up in Casper. And so in 1985, I've been with the Corps ever since. And it's been quite a, a great experience with in a wonderful community, and we've since developed into one of the tro- top organizations in the world of our like. Almost 40 years in now for you. What, what has the evolution been like? It's, uh, it's been, you know, a, a labor of passion. You know, it's, it's uh, been something I've been blessed with, you know, and we've accomplished a lot as an organization and we realized as we were getting better and better with as a competitive unit that kids started coming to us from all over the world and auditioning to us from all across the United States and we started losing part of that community tie and that community base and so we've kind of refocused the organization and we realize that our drum and bugle corps is our flagship and it brings us international attention and the attention of the music industry they support us a lot um, but it also gives us the ability to reach out and pass along those skills and the, those programs and the type of environment that we create to be world class. We want to bring that to the kids in a local community, and we've expanded our program, and that's why the move to Ascend Performing Arts, it, it kind of changed our focus, and now we have thousands of kids that we directly impact every year compared to just the one drum and bugle corps, and it's been that labor of love and our organization has grown as a result and it's a robust infrastructure you bring kids in you teach them skills and then they have outlets even beyond their time at ascend through through some of the initiatives that you have what what are the processes what is the process like for a young person looking to join ascend you mentioned there's an audition process is there also recruiting or or anything like that how does that work we look at it pretty holistically one of the greatest things that can happen to a a young person in school is to be inspired. Mm -hmm. And we we run events here locally. Um, Drums Along the Rockies is one. Uh, We hold uh, Friendship Cup marching band clinics and competitions and where we expose kids to that level of excellence. And so it starts right there. They get inspired, they get exposed. Then someday they may want to audition for the Blue Knights. They come to what we call um, experience uh, clinics, where they see what it's like to rub elbows with a 20-year-old college music major as a 14-year-old aspiring musician and see that this is pretty cool and man, do these guys play. So we create a lot of those opportunities. And from there, you know, when they want to audition, we've, like I say, we've gained international acclaim as being one of the top in the world. And we have quite a, a social media following from all over the world and kids come and audition. This year we held auditions in uh, Miami, LA, San Francisco, Indiana, even as far away as in Japan. And those kids all come to Denver and to be in the Drum and Bugle Corps. Um, And it's that acclaim again that has empowered us 
to be able to return what we do back to the community through our other programs. Can you give me some insight on the, on the numbers and you know, how many kids audition and how many get through? Right now, we have three competitive organizations. Um, two of them are percussion ensembles. Um, the one has won several world championships as a percussion hotbed. You know, we're considered one of the best in the world. Nice. And... So between those ensembles and the Drum and Bugle Corps, um, this year we've auditioned up close to 2,000 students for about 220 um, spots. But in that process, you know, we have a lot of kids that'll come and audition us with us for two or three years mm -hmm. uh, before they make it. You know, so it's it's competitive, and that's again I keep returning back to that. That's why we've decided that we need to look at everything that we do and find ways that we can get back into the community. And we know that inspiring kids at a young age, you know, is really important. In the Denver metro area, you know, there's tons of opportunities for kids that are engaged in athletics. Mm -hmm. You know, you drive across Denver and you're going to drive past millions, if not billions of dollars of facilities that have been built for kids who are trying to achieve higher levels of excellence in the sports. And, soccer fields, basketball courts, baseball diamonds. But when it comes to kids who want to achieve excellence and, and excel in the arts, you know, as far as that goes for scholastic age kids, we're the game. Yeah. You know, we're, and, you know, so we take that responsibility really seriously. You've touched on this a little bit, but can you, can you speak to the importance of music education and, and the role that it plays in the development of a young adult? What, you know, what are some of the skills both seen and unseen that are instilled it, through them? And I think music and the arts uniquely advance and enhance a, a young person's life from from a social emotional aspect. I mean, you have to cooperate with the people. It's very similar to athletics, obviously, but it's more in that emotionally you're connecting and physically, you know, you're listening and doing. There's really nothing in the world, you know, imagine reading a foreign language in real time, translating it to something physical mm. that creates sound and playing. And then you need to be listening to the people around you and connecting. And you need to be emotionally connecting. And that's what music is all about. Now you add what we do. You add now you're moving and dancing together in unison and performing and connecting with an audience of sometimes of 30, 40,000 people. What an amazing thing for young people. It not only develops you and gives you that sense of belonging, but it also cognitively, it fires up the brain like nothing else in the world. That level of coordination is astounding. I don't think as an audience member, you really put that all together because we see the finished product. We see this polished, uh, succinct, precision performance, but it's it's really a lot going on at once. Yeah, if you've never seen um, drum corps at its highest level, it's not what you think. Yeah. You know, it's Broadway on a football field. Yeah. It, it um, Our shows at the Blue Knights always perform are kind of known for having an aesthetic of connecting and delivering a message to an audience that engages them in kind of a conversation with you. And, you know, people, it's you know, amazing the emotional connection we create with our audience through our performance. There's other drum and bugle corps that come out and blow jazz and, you know, are just amazing. Others that, you know, connect through, uh, connect through um, orchestral music and, and, you know, that type of literature. You know, kids get exposed to everything from Wagner to the Beatles. Wow. You know? Through our performances. You served as the longest tenured core director of the Fame Blue Knights, 34 years to be exact. In 2019, you turned that duty over. How much of a challenge was it to surrender the reins? Uh, you know, um, it's still a work in progress. <laughs> you know, um, it's, you know, it's, it's time that we work on the succession and I'm focusing my efforts on, on, uh, the community and our other programs. We kind of divide our organization into four parts. It's education, where we're going down and teaching kids at the grassroots and involving them in leadership conferences. And it's events, Drums Along the Rockies, um, Core Encore over in Utah, our Friendship Cup Marching Band Series, which are devoted to smaller developing bands throughout the state of Colorado. We have our ensembles like the Blue Knights and our percussion ensembles. Then we have an entertainment division where we can go out and perform. We've been really fortunate 
and have some big feathers in our cap. One of our cool things that we did initially was the Denver Broncos came to us over 20 years ago and said, we want an instant tradition for our fans. Yeah. We introduced a drum line, and now every NFL team has a drum line, and now the basketball um, teams have drum lines. And here in Denver, those are pretty much all connected to the Blue Knights in one way or another. So that's our entertainment. We've we're the only marching band that's ever performed in the Middle East. We got invited to go to Bahrain wow. and perform there. And so the entertainment's a big thing for us too. So that's where I'm focusing is on how we grow this and engage more people in what it is we do. You've mentioned uh, Drums Along the Rockies, which is celebrating its 60th performance this year on July 13th. Uh, in the past, it's been held at Mile High Stadium. Now it's at CSU's Canvas Stadium uh, in Fort Collins. For, for those who have never been, can you paint a picture of the event and give us insight as to why everybody needs to experience it? Yeah, if, if you've never seen Drum Corps in its modern day version, it's an amazing, an amazing performance. We'll have eight of the world's very best, including the world champion Concord Blue Devils out of Concord, California. Santa Clara Vanguard, the troopers from up in Wyoming, um, groups from Arizona, all over the all over the Western United States. And those performances, as I said earlier, there'll be everything from amazing jazz and dance. You know, we all have a color guard, but a modern day color guard now is com comprised of over forty dancers, and they do spin flags. Ours um, actually. You'll see aerials being done out on a football field as we perform, and and you know they all have a theme, and it's like an an amazing night of entertainment, and it's a great place to bring your family. And Drums on the Rockies was for 55 years the longest running event, annual event in Mile High Stadium, other than the Broncos. Wow! And COVID. And, New ownership has kind of changed our world a little bit, yeah. but we found a tremendous home up in Canvas Stadium. And on the 13th, you can go to drumsalongtherockies.com. Tickets go from anywhere from $25 up to well over 100 so. I was talking to your team member, Bliss, about what the atmosphere is like even outside of the stadium with yeah. groups. Basically, I mean, it's, it's like a, a football tailgate on steroids almost where it's kind of a, a freestyle community event that's just a fun atmosphere to be a part of. Is there still competition amongst the groups and the factions, or is it just a celebration? Uh, it's it's both. Yeah. It's extremely competitive. Yeah. Extremely competitive. It, the, these performances are judged and a, a winner is declared. But um, yeah, the, the environment, if you... Uh, I kind of chuckled when we were over in Bahrain, we were at a, a Grand Prix race. It was for the opening ceremonies of a Grand Prix race. And you have the pits, you know, and people walk through the pits and look at the cars. And before the show, all the different cores are warming up and the kids can go right up and like be right in the face of the performers and the performers invite that. <laughs> and so it's like this big, you know, like party atmosphere, pregame event. And then you go into the stadium and watch the performances. So... You could spend the whole day there. Yeah. What was the reception like in Bahrain? You know, the experiencing this for the first time. How did the audience react to you? Uh, it, it was really, really a great experience. They were didn't quite know what to think. Yeah. Uh, it's, we had to make sure that we were being very culturally sensitive and aware of of their culture. Actually, the, a team came over from there to watch us rehearse. Oh, cool. Make sure our uniforms were appropriate. Right. And. Uh, but certainly nobody had ever seen anything like what we did. And then we had to adapt the show to be on the, uh, on the racetrack itself in front of the main grandstands. And the, the crowd was, was pretty amazed. It was fun. You've touched on this a little bit. And I think even Visitor War a couple of years ago, we had the, the Broncos drum line at our annual meeting. But mm -hmm. um, Ascend helps coordinate these events that people can book through your website or at least get information. Um, how does that work? Are those custom performances or how do you facilitate those those event performances? Yeah, we have to make sure first that it's something that, you know, from a timing standpoint, a lot of our performers and stuff are in college and in high school. Oh, yeah. you know, so we have to make sure that we have the right combination of performers available. And uh, 
But if you contact our office, we can, you know, if if we can't do it, we can usually hook you up with somebody who can. But we, we love doing that and it gives our gives our members more opportunities to perform. And, you know, so that's that's a big part of what we do in growing. Uh, in my introduction of you, I, I should have introduced you as Hall of Famer Mark Arnold. You were inducted into the Drum Corps International Hall of Fame in 2014. What did that honor mean to you at the time? Yeah, obviously it's an honor, but it's, you know, that's on the back of a lot of people who have worked really hard to make the organization what it is today. And especially, you know, to me, that moment was the most rewarding uh, because I was nominated and the nomination was driven by actual members of the Drum and Bugle Corps. And, wow. and you know, I've always told my staff, um, you know, take care of the kids and the kids will take care of you. And that's kind of what, what happened there. So I, that's what was extra special about that. When you're typically inducted into a Hall of Fame, it, it tends to mark the end of a career, you know, sending him off into the sunset, so to speak. But here you are 10 years later. What keeps that fire burning for you? Um, I mean, first off, you're young. Yeah, but yeah I, mean, I, I am young. No, I'm just <laughs> but it's it is being around these amazing young people who you know we talk about. It's the long rehearsals. It's you know when we're on tour with them. It's sitting on the curb eating dinner. It, it's all that stuff yeah. more than anything. It's about doing something you love with people you love, and you know how blessed I am to be able to be around those kids every year that are just amazing. You notice that with athletes when they're doing these interviews, they always ask, what do you miss most about it? Is it the competition? And they go, yeah, but they go, it's it's the bus rides, it's the the dinners with the with the guys, and it's, it's hanging out, it's the community that you build through whatever endeavor you're involved in. I imagine that's a similar situation there. Uh, yeah, absolutely. These When we go on tour, well, from the time we start with the Drum and Bugle Corps in the summer, we move in on Memorial Day, and we spend a whole month here in Colorado putting our show together. And we're talking seven days a week, yeah. um, 10 to 14-hour days. And so you can imagine the level of excellence and the just the passion that goes into these shows. Then we take it on the road, and we go everywhere from the east coast to the west coast and everything in between and so it's this totally immersive experience and the bonds that are formed there there's so many of these young people become band directors and share that kind of passion with their students and it's a whole community that is pretty special and when you see the performances of of the blue knights or our percussion ensembles or just of kids and music in general when you realize what they're going through to reach the you know, for their craft to be that excellent is it's motivating. You've got to have these moments where alumni come up to you. These people that you remember initially as snot nosed kids with no confidence, maybe, or, or limited confidence. And you've seen them blossom in their careers. And, and now they come to you and probably thank you for your mentorship. What, what is that like to see these people blossom and grow and become directors and leaders in their own right. That's got to be so affirming. Oh, it, it is affirming for the activity and for the organization. And, you know, now I'm now, <laughs> you know, I'm starting to get, hey, my son just made your core. Nice. You know, so you're getting this multi-generational. I haven't had a great grandchild yet, but have had one grandchild. And I'm like, okay, this has been a long time. I've been around here. Um, I love that quote, though, take care of the kids and the kids will take care of you. You've given a lot to the kids, but what are some of the unexpected rewards you've gotten from from mentoring and, and watching these kids grow over the years? I, you, you touched on it earlier. It's like you see them blossom in their careers and, you know, it just makes you proud of watching and Knowing that the type of people that come out of out of either our drum corps or even the kids in the high school marching bands and, and high school music programs, that they have a sense of community and they know that everybody that's around them is of equal value to them. I think it's that recognition that that diversity in a group of 150 that exists you're you're all equals and you depend on one another for success and you know the the successful people we have out in the business world and stuff they all come from that that grounding you know that everybody on the team makes it happen mm -hmm. and that's you know they're the best people in the world to hire what degree is is technology and innovation impacting what you're doing these days and and how do you see ascend evolving with with all these innovations i think um 
You touched on something there that's really important in our mission as an organization. Um, is that, you know, we're not really training, you know, the next Taylor Swift or, you know, I, I always say that um, you look out at the marching band, you know, and they might not be the most popular kids in school, you know, the, the you know, the, the, the quarterback. And, right. But you look out there and you look at what they're doing as what I know is, they may not be the most popular, but they just might be the smartest kid yeah. in the school. And they, you know, and if we can take that type of a, of a kid and put them on a stage and make them feel confident performing in front of five thousand people, you know, we're not we're not um, we're not necessarily like eradicating cancer from the world, but we just might be creating the people that do. And that's that's and so technology, you know, yeah, we kids that are a part of these organizations, they see the electronic um, integration and creating the soundscapes and the, you know, so there's sound production, there's recording, there's video, there's, you know, kids will, like I did, you know, I saw, I I had a career that started with managing tours. I was a tour manager and then came, became what I am today. And, you know, there's merchandising, there's, we built props, the props are extravagant, you know, so there's all these other instrument repair, retail sales, all these different avenues in music. You know, when when parents have said to me, yeah, but you can't make money in music. And I'm like, sure you can. <laughs> Music's a gazillion dollar business. Yeah. And Taylor Swift ain't the only one making money out there. You know, so it's, so we introduce kids to all those careers. And when they get involved and they're passionate about music, then they may be passionate about all kinds of other careers that they're introduced to as a part of it. And and yeah, you're establishing roots that can branch out to any number of areas in, in leadership and development professionally and, and commercially. So that, yeah. yeah, you're you're setting a, an important foundation for these kids. You know, Ascend Performing Arts really is a, a, a bit of a hidden gem in Aurora. I don't think everybody understands that you guys are here in our neighborhood and you're doing right. great work with our youth. Um, how can folks listening get involved with Ascend? If this interests you, just reach out to us. I'm I'm telling you, any career that you have and somehow touches our organization. You know, when we're on tour, we're, I say we have the busy, we have a big kitchen truck that feeds 220 meals wow. four times a day, you know, to welders for props, to attorneys that help advise us along the way, accountants, seamstresses, you name it. You know, we, we have a place that you could really be a part of it. And the kids that you're around are just will will make you feel as young as I feel, I guess, <laughs> you know, and and so, you know, we're looking for some good, strong board members, community leaders to be engaged. So really, there's a place for everybody in our organization because it's a big community. It's a big family. The first thing you could do right now is get, is get tickets for this year's uh, Drums Along the Rockies, 60th year. July 13th. Make sure you go see that at CSU's Canvas Stadium in Fort Collins. It'll be my first year. Uh, you better just, be there. Yeah. Just, through, just through my research, it was like, oh, I've been missing out. And I'm born and raised here. I've been missing out on this incredible event. So I'm excited that I've learned more about it. And I'm excited that I'll get a chance to, to take part in it. Uh, Mark Arnold, CEO of Ascend Performing Arts. Thank you for taking the time today. You're truly doing great work in our community. And really excited to see all that, that Ascend Performing Arts brings over the next year. Oh, David, thank you. It's been great talking and hopefully we'll get the city of aurora engaged and we'll be more engaged in the city absolutely you as a result you can learn more about ascend performing arts at ascendperformingarts.org and be sure to follow on social media at ascend performing arts and also follow the blue knights at blue knights dbc Thank you for listening to the Gateway to the Rockies podcast. Visit Aurora is the official destination marketing organization for the city of Aurora, Colorado, and acts as the primary liaison between meeting planners and hotel partners. As Aurora's convention and visitors bureau, Visit Aurora's mission is grounded in showcasing Aurora as a premier destination for meetings, business, and leisure travel. Visit Aurora represents more than 75 plus hotel properties with 13,500 plus guest rooms and more than 1 million square feet of meeting space, including Colorado's largest resort, 
Gaylord Rockies Resort and Convention Center. As Colorado's third largest city, Aurora is located minutes away from Denver International Airport and showcases mountain views, memorable meeting spaces, and 250 plus international eateries that offer a unique experience for each and every visitor. As the gateway to the Rockies, Visit Aurora's role in the local community goes beyond marketing the city as a destination. The Visit Aurora team is here to assist you with your Colorado visit from facilitating your meeting, event, or convention to helping you discover local flavor and attractions. Go beyond the boardroom in Aurora, Colorado. For more, visit us at visitaurora.com.